What's up, people? Welcome to another edition of the New Breed Podcast, the world's best music show. Talking about everything brutal, new death, hard, slam, grind, thrash, core, metal. I'm one half of your hosting duo, Joe Horskow. With me, I have my partner in crime, also wearing a black hoodie with red lettering, the notorious TIM. Tim, how's it going? Great. Fucking great. And joining us this week, we have another special episode. We're going to talk to Zeke from the band 13, talk about their new album, Black Ghost. Zeke, thanks for joining. What's up, man? Glad to be back. We are glad to have you. So, Tim, let's get the obvious out of the way. Yo, Zeke, this is fucking heavy, man. This is heavy. Like, Tim and I were remarking before you joined. I put it on, and I was not expecting what I got. And I love what I got. But it this is heavy and aggressive, and I love the last one. This one, you you kind of cranked it up to eleven, dude. <laughs> Thanks. That yeah. was the goal. Would, would would I be right in saying that your metalcore vibes came out on this one? Like oh, your influences, absolutely. I mean. Absolutely, because um, yeah, yeah. a lot of this record, like I wrote it, um, starting in like 2014, and then on and off up until uh the year of release and so um you know back then i was doing more metalcore stuff i was in a you know band in that more side of that genre um and uh i implemented a lot of those influences to finishing out this album kind of like you know finishing what i started so and i think those influences are going to come out a little bit more over time there's going to be more of like a little bit of everything as we go um But this album, like, I really wanted it to still be heavy like the last one, but also signal that, like, change is coming and things are going to get weird and different as we go. Yeah, I mean, not not saying that you can't continually put out new metal vibe records, but as a musician, when you start hearing other bands and influences that you like or or when you start hearing bands and get influenced by that kind of stuff, it's it's going to come out in your writing and you can definitely hear because. I was listening to it again today on the way home from work, and I was like, I'm like, dude, like the double bass parts that you were putting in there. I'm like, mm-hmm. I fucking love that shit, man. <laughs> so it, yeah, it's man. definitely, I'm definitely happy that I was right on that because it's like, now that I'm thinking about it, since you wrote it in 2000, since you started writing it back then, it's like, that's when that type of metalcore was getting pretty big. I mean, because like I always say, like when, when you have you on, dude, like you have a distinct way of writing amazing choruses, dude. Like they just pop, dude. And yes, I, I fucking yes. love that shit, man. So keep that going, and, and the the more because I know you guys have what like five, six more albums you're doing, right? Uh, well, this is the sixth one, so okay. there's going to be more. Okay, yeah, but yeah, like yeah. keep keep them courses in there, man, because they've I love that shit, dude. There's just yeah. like I mean, like like what that's is it is the song called Vassals? Yeah. Yeah, like, yes. dude, like, the chorus and that. So I fucking love it, dude. So you brought up that song. My note here is this is the most mature song they've done to date. This is easily the most That's mature cool. song I've heard from you guys to date. There's And mature in the sense of nice. it's got everything, but it's not. Bands sometimes, you know, when they try to do everything, it comes out like a jumbled mess. You know, you can tell they were just, like, throwing shit in a blender. The song yeah. is completely coherent, and my 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 notes were were it is simultaneously fast yet plotting with swing riffs and the vocal juxtapositions, both loud, soft, fast, and slow. So uh, anybody who's watching, anybody who's listening, put on this album, go to that song. If you don't like that album, you probably don't want to listen to us going forward because you're probably not in our target demographic. Truth be told, taste wise. <laughs> But yeah, man, that that song is a, is a monster, and it's early. I mean, thirteen tracks, and this was only track number what three, four, four. Yeah. So, Tim, let me ask you: While we got Zeke here, at what point in the first song did you go, "Okay, we're not in Kansas anymore"? What what part was it? What in the the opening track? Yes. As as soon as it kicks in, it just kicks you in the face. Yes. <laughs> like, cause cause in the first song, like, see, I wanted to talk about this first, like. This is a long record. I mean, the, the what's this about an hour and seventeen? I think it, it is. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, hour and seventeen minutes. Yeah, like it's a long record, man, and it just feels like I. It feels like maybe at the time when you were writing this, like you had a lot of emotions to get out. Would that be something? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you could definitely oh, hear definitely. it and feel it in it, man. See, because that's the kind of stuff in music that I 
I cling to. It's like the when people get their emotions out and instead of just writing, you know, lyrics that just rhyme and it's just like I'm phoning it in. But like I never <laughs> feel like you guys like you phone it in on your records. And I feel like as a time period, because it, it's it's always weird to me when you're like, oh, I wrote it in 2012, but it's 2022. And I'm like, wow, like that's yeah. it's, that's the shit that really really like makes me love the band it's just like you can put out stuff from eight years ago and it sounds fresh as hell right now like that's amazing shit dude that's talent to me man it's all about uh knowing my sound and how to replicate it over and over and take whatever pieces that i can get my hands on to put together into something that works every time that's always been my goal with songwriting yeah well you you definitely now it dude because i mean like like jay yeah. said like i love the record before this freak show i i mean there's tracks on freak show that were like we're stuck in my head for fucking months yeah. but yeah then i listen to this one and it's just like now these are all stuck in my head i i and so i'm sitting at my desk and my speaker is over here off to the side and I have my my tablet up, which is when I stream everything through. And I pull up the album and I hit play and I'm not paying attention. And the double bass kicks in. And I went, what? Yeah. And then I woke up my tablet. I'm like, is this, this was 13, right? Like I didn't pick the wrong. Oh, what? And then I, uh, yeah, uh, the, <laughs> the double bass in the first song to me, I was like, okay, so he's taking it in a more aggressive direction. I'm, I'm, a, I'm with it, man. I'm with the ride. Um, there's almost breakdowns. In the song, like there are parts where you're like, you could have thrown in a stereotypical bury your dead mosh breakdown, would not have yeah. sounded out of place. Well, it would have sounded out of place for a 13 record, but sonically, it would have sounded completely normal. And you would have went, Oh, okay, bring out the mosh shorts. Um, <laughs> and then the surprise for me, the 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 kicker surprise was the the silent break, and then at four minutes and 38 seconds, the second part kicks in which gets really mm -hmm. up-tempo and aggressive. And that, Zeke, I was not expecting that, man. And I was like, wait, is that still the same song again? I'm waking up my thing to make sure I'm still looking at the right thing. I'm like, that was I, totally unique. Totally unique. I was not expecting that. So was that was that plan, Zeke? You were going to kind of just go out on a limb and maybe try some new stuff? Like, okay, I'm going to push it here and see where I can take it? Or did how did that how did that idea come to you? Because I I personally love the the 15 seconds of quiet and then you come back in with the Mosh riff. Yeah. Where did that come from? Um so the the first half of the song I basically conceptualized like long before I even started 13. Like I think I was like a kid like in line at Disneyland like writing songs in my head. And um like that's where like the intro riff came from and like the vocals and in, in like that first verse. Um, like I held on to that for years and I started writing that into a song and that's where the first half came from. Uh, and then I was writing a, a separate song, which that song at the time was called Black Ghost. And that song sounded more like the second half and I didn't feel like either one was complete. So I just put them together. Well, it works. And, it works yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. Like, I, I still hold on to memories of songs that I don't have written anywhere, but I remember writing them when I was, like, really young, and I'm still able to, like, use that as material in my adulthood. Like, Which is kind of wild, man. Weird how that works, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, but be before I forget, I just had to pull, I just had to mute myself and pull up the, the song. In this, the song Vassal is what you're talking about. I was I, I'm trying to figure out what you're saying in in the singing part. Um, so I wanted to ask you what the lyrics were because they're not on here. I couldn't find them online. I it starts out with uh, uh in all it, what do you say in all my life or or in uh, my what, what do you say again? So like this is the the clean vocals and the screaming in between, but it's uh, uh, yeah, yes, in all my yes. life and all my life I failed to find uh the difference between right and wrong in my mind, and all I feel is not what's real the things that terrorize me that I can't conceal. Okay. Yeah, dude. Good. Yeah. Dude. Real dude. My favorite track on the record. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank Hands, you. Down. <laughs> Hands down. Yeah, dude, that I see, see, like I can, I feel that kind of shit, man. Like, because look, cause like I said earlier, like, I feel like when you write songs, like you're not just phoning it in, man. And that, that, that's just what drags me in, man. And then I'll just keep listening and listening. And I'm like, fuck dude, like there's 12 other songs <laughs> on this record. <laughs> right 
<laughs> it's just it's just it's just really good songwriting man like i i really applaud you dude like to have the patience and the time and the ability to do that year after year dude that's just crazy to me man yeah and, it, it's and- been difficult um with all the like moving around but i just moved into a new house and like we don't plan on leaving for a long ass time so hopefully i can get you know um more established here and get back to writing songs like I used to like jumping from house to house. It's, it's hard to stay dedicated to writing the same way that I used to when I had all the time and space. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's gotta be distracting, you know, like you need to, it's anybody creative. Typically I, my, I mean, you got to get into the mindset. You got to get into a space that you can clear up this, clear up the room to think. And I get it. I get it. Um, I will say too, I love the track. I forget what the track's called. That it's pay, it's basically just electronics in it. Uh what it might be it might be Dark oh, Cloud that I'm thinking. Dark Cloud, yeah. Yeah, that, I love the direction a, of that stuff too. It's good. Yeah. Man. That one was a, a late addition to the album. Like all the other songs were already like written before the year of the album release, but then that one came like in the process of finishing the album. Um like I, I took a track off that was just noise that I felt like didn't really belong. It was just kind of a filler or stopgap. And I put this song like, you know, just slid it right in and it just totally works. Like it mm-hmm. still gave the effect of breaking up the album into into two, you know, uh, different parts, but it wasn't, you know, just a filler song. It was actually like real and it gave me the opportunity to like mess with like uh you know sort of like trap music style electronics and stuff like uh i don't get a lot of opportunities to do that writing for the albums themselves so i i take what i can and i enjoy doing it and and it doesn't sound it doesn't sound forced right like sometimes you know bands put in the segue or they put in the token electronic track and it kind of like oh okay they're looking for they were looking for filler to fill out the album and but i mean you go from what is it dead animals to dark cloud to mangled and even if you if you start from if you start from dark cloud and go this way and this way go up the track list and down the track list there is still cohesion it makes it makes sense because those songs that bookend it actually fit the interlude themselves yeah yeah yeah, you don't like yeah. put all your bangers up front and then you keep it stale in the end because I because I, I like like to Jay's comment like I think I agree with that 100% in today's age like a lot of people are like we got to put all the bangers at the front because we want to keep people listening and stuff but I think the way that you you do your track listing is like it, it definitely works in your favor because you're expecting wow this 11 songs in this song is fucking good like like I, yeah. I just think <laughs> Like so, so like the way that you pace the record, man, it, it's great. And and I noticed that on all the records, even like the earlier stuff. I'm like, dude, like the pacing on these records is perfect. Like it's just, I, like I, I'll keep saying, dude, I don't know how you fucking do it, man. <laughs> I I try, man. I I think a lot about like the pacing of records. I paid a lot of attention to like how all the bands that I listened to would do it. And like I I bought a lot of CDs as a kid. Like I was you know, uh, I was able to like still be brought up in that era of the industry and, you know, get a perspective for it. And, um, you know, just looking through all the albums, Slipknot, Mudvayne, you know, all, all the stuff, you know, I noticed that like there was a pattern to making like a, an album flow really well. And I wanted to replicate that with my own music later on when I started, you know, writing music. Um, and I just kept with that ever since. Like it's always been my my secret weapon, I guess. It's what um, Unmetal is truly based on, aside from the like uh, punk rock esque like fuck the man attitude, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I, I I definitely hear and see that a lot with when you go into track two, which is I'm guessing it's Victim Cult, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah like like I, in I, in I that like song, do, uh, silly spellings. Say say that again. Uh, I like to do silly weird spellings on track names. Oh uh, no 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 that's fine. But 
going into that track, like, yeah, was when I started noticing you putting in like the double bass parts in there, and I was like, oh, okay, I see where this record's going. <laughs> but but I think the pacing from track one, which is to me, track one is your typical thirteen song. It's got the the big choruses and the heavy parts. But then when you go into track two, it's just like, all right, this is a song you're getting your ass beat to live. You know what I mean? It, yes. Yes, it's opener, heavy, heavy, um, uh, pinnacle, right? Yeah. That vassal is this is the song that represents the band. Then you have Don't Go Into the Forest, which is again typical 13. Then you've got the slower, quieter song, Love is Dead and So Am I. And then it picks back up again. And it, again, Tim and I have beaten this idea to death. And, and you hit it, Zeke. The idea of sequencing is kind of lost, where you need your. You can't redline the audience, right? You can't have everything up. The days of Pantera putting out no. Far Beyond Driven, where you redline the first six songs, you, you blow people's ears yeah, out. People don't have the attention span for it anymore. You need to, you need to have some sort of dynamics. And yeah, this you you nailed it on this one. You nailed it. Thank you. I, so I yeah. I want to get into because I know I know in the past two episodes like. I'm the dork that likes to get into the, the the production side of stuff. So I know we spoke a little bit on this before, but I just want to know your process. Like, because on this, like all the records, like, is it only you doing, you do everything, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then, the and then you have, a gas yeah. okay. And then live, obviously you have the band backing and stuff and you do the drums, you know, you do the drums with the, uh, I'm guess running through the like a laptop or something, which is completely fine. Yeah. Who gives a fuck? That that matters nothing to me because I would do the same shit. Fuck mm-hmm. it. I actually think it's kind of cool that you have that the band has the balls to get up there and say, fuck you, we don't need a drummer. We're gonna do this and it's gonna sound great either way. But yeah, we, we just wanted to play shows. Like ex- we didn't care exactly. We, yeah. Yeah. And and I'm assuming the way you write stuff, you want it to sound the way it's it sounds on the fucking record. You don't want a drummer to come in there and just put his own spin on it. And then you're kind of like, you lose the vibe of it. But, but t- tell me about how you go in there. Like when you start a song, like, are you starting it like writing? Like, cause I'm assuming you use like superior drummer or something, right? Yeah. I have um superior drummer for uh, the drum samples and stuff. Okay. I did um, like, uh, like DI bass and guitar, just everything I do is in the box it's on the laptop like i don't have a lot of physical hardware that i'm using when recording i have like a preamp that i use and a separate uh interface that i use for vocals specifically um but a lot of guitar nerds will hate me for saying this but i'm still recording guitar through uh line six tone port gx (laughs) sounds good dude yeah like i I found uh, like a, an amp sim that really works with that particular guitar tone through that interface. And um, I mean, it's super easy to use. Like I don't even have to think about it. So I just, I just run that and that's how you get the, uh, the guitar tone for creep show. And I think the blood on the wall and I'm pretty sure most, if not all the guitar are black ghost, that's how I've been doing it. Which um, is which, which is even crazier because like, it, it to to come on here and be like, I fucking use a line six. I mean, my first interface was the same thing you're using, and I didn't upgrade yeah. it because I thought it sucked. I just upgraded because I needed more inputs. But like, yeah, dude, the tone hot that tone you could get great. It, all it is is you got to go in there and you got to fucking tweak the knobs, man, and you got to fucking get it to sound the way you yeah. want it. Because a lot of people are like, oh, these stock sounds sound yeah. like shit, but you know you can tweak them, right? Like, it's kind of <laughs> yeah. easy to just tweak. So, like, you yeah. basically just yeah. go in there and do, do you start with the guitar or do you get, like, a drum thing going? Because that that's how I'm always wondering how people do this. So, specifically, people who do everything themselves is basically what I'm asking. Yeah. Um, I mean, it depends. Sometimes I get an idea on vocals or, or lyrics, and sometimes I get an idea on par riffs, and sometimes I get an idea for, like, you know, cool drum thing. And uh, I just kind of, like, I organize them in my head, and okay. um, when I'm ready to, like, get like sit down and get, like, writing done, like, I'll either, like, uh, type notes in my phone or, like, quick record them with, like, my voice memos or 
um, you know, or I'll boot up Pro Tools and just get to work um, and kind of build up songs from basically nothing sometimes, uh, nothing but like a small little idea. Uh, just plant that seed and it grows out. I think that's kind of how Vassal started out, actually. I was just fucking around on guitar and then I came up with like that that intro riff and I thought that sounded cool. And then I got bored with like that genre. So I changed genres just on a whim. And then that ended up sounding cool. And I just kept doing that over and over until I had gone through like four or five different band styles or genres and ended up with that song. I, I, I love how you're like, yeah, uh, I just use a basic line six, but I use Pro Tools. So like that's that's fucking amazing to me. It's like I gotta have the Pro Tools though. Yeah. I mean I I like that I know how to use it. Yeah, exactly. There you go. That's that's the main reason I use it. Um, but like I don't know if I recommend it to everybody. Like yep. I not everybody needs the, the exact same equipment that so and so is using people yep. need to just try a bunch of different things and figure out what works for them it, yeah exactly man and so so how long did it take you to get as good as you are at the programming because that shit is hard man to get all them fills in there like that that's yeah that takes a lot of skill dude um well i used to um do all my drum samples and drum beats through reason four which is oh, okay. old um it's from 2007 and I still use it, um, which tells you how old my computer that I'm doing all this on is. Uh, but I got I to gotta use that to keep this signature sound. Like this is exactly how I have it. Um, but I went from using Reason to uh, moving on to Superior Drummer. Um, and I would pencil in the notes and just copy paste and you know do all that stuff, like fix whatever needs to be fixed over time. And then um, when I was in school for audio engineering, I got to try out Cubase and they have a function on there called uh, Step Record where you can just click the keys on the keyboard and then oh. there's the drum notes and you can just sequence them that way. Oh, okay. And I did that for a lot of the older, older 13 songs while I was in college just to get the practice. And those MIDI files that I ended up making were like the backbone for what you would end up hearing years later on the first couple of 13 records. Like I was just getting in practice and, um, you know, trying stuff out and they ended up being on the record in the future. Oh, okay. So uh, I'm yeah. assuming you go into audio school. So you do the mixing and mastering as well then. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I feel like I don't do it the way that um, they say you should, which is why I still do it. Yeah, I mean, there's no rules to this, man. If it sounds fucking good, it sounds good. See, the, see that's the thing yeah. I hate, too. Like, a lot of people are like, you got to use a high pass on this one. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. If it sounds good, it sounds good. You can do that, but you can find some other way to achieve what you need. Exactly. You know? I I just can't believe you do all the instruments, all the writing, all the lyrics, and then you produce, mix it, master it all yourself. It's like, Jesus, where do you find the time? That's what I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> um, well, I am on the spectrum, so maybe that has something to do with it. <laughs> yeah, isn't everybody these days, Zeke, truth be told? <laughs> yeah, it's true. But I have documentation, so, you know. And you're you're still no, in, are you you're in Texas? Uh yeah, I'm in Austin still. Okay. Um, no, it I guess it's hot it, it's hot down there, man. I'm in Leander. Yeah. I'm in Leander, which is like north of Austin, but not very far. It's still Austin area, but it's it's nice out here. You know. Oh I'm gonna ask now. I'm gonna ask one more production thing so Jay doesn't Oh no! Jay's no, probably I, like, what no, the fuck I'm, is going honestly, on? Honestly, as as someone who has never recorded, I find all this shit really fascinating. Yeah, it, it's it's super. <sighs> see, it's super fascinating to me because, like, I I write my own stuff, record it, all that stuff. But like, I'm no, I'm not even close to the degree that you can get the sounds to go. But it, I just find it very boring to do everything myself. That's why I find it, like Jay said, fascinating when someone like you can just 
do that and just put something out that sounds that good. Like that's got to be very fulfilling at the end of that. Like when that record comes out, like, like how fulfilling is that for you when people are like, you know, like you go on a podcast like this and they're just like, yo, like, because being a musician, there's always times where you're like, I don't think this is good or I don't know if this is good. But then you get like people telling you like, yo, this is like, yo, this is even better than the last record. Like it has to be super fulfilling for you because of all the work you put in. It is. It definitely is. Um, I, I felt like I had a moment like that on this album where I felt like it didn't come out as good as it, it should have. Um, like I was kind of a, like a little unsure about how it came out mix wise. Um, and I just, I've only heard positive feedback for this album since it came out. And, uh, you know, I sometimes wonder if like, I'm imagining that stuff just out of the anxiety and yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, uh, it are you, a... are the songs in, are, are they seven string? Uh, yeah. Everything for 13 so far has been written on a seven string. Uh, I do plan on using an eight string for a future album. Oh uh, shit. Yeah, I it's like having to learn the instrument all over again. <laughs> yeah. Um Yeah. It's wild, but I'm I'm trying. I'm coming up with some cool stuff. Um I just hope it still fits with how people know the band. I just can't get over the size of the neck on the eight string. Like it literally looks like you're putting your hand around my water bottle. <laughs> and I I don't know how hand strength. So let me ask you this, Zeke. Um every artist loves all their albums because it's a birthing of creation. But when you look at this album, which one, which one of the tracks are your favorite? Or do you have a couple that stand out to you as, yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of those. I know I nailed that. On this album. Um, I think my biggest favorite is vassals. Um, I also really liked don't go into the forest. Yeah. Um, mangled is really special to me. Um, Jacob Shaw is an amazing vocalist and I've been following his career for a long time. He's uh, uh, from the Bay area, which is where I grew up. Um, is is he on the track? Yeah. yeah he's on mangled. He does um, some backup vocals. Um, yeah, it was it's... difficult to, it was difficult to arrange too. Cause he was, you know, having health issues and I think he's still having ongoing health issues and like insurance wasn't helping him and shit. Um, so like fucking America. it was like unsure if he, yeah exactly it was like unsure if he was gonna like get to finish the song and i you know felt really bad and i i hope he's doing all right um if y'all have ever heard of the band defiler um they're fucking sick uh he's the he's the me of that band um okay. y'all should go check that defiler okay um, that down right now yeah yeah uh, what else is on the album? Sorry. Like I, I just, I, October has been nothing but the album for me. And so like, since November started, I've just been trying to like decompress from that. So I like have already forgotten what songs are on it. <laughs> no, um, no, no, that's fine. We're here to remind you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's funny um, because my notes, I said on Maggot, I'm like, is there someone else on this? singing on this because i was listening to it i'm like is that somebody different on here because i don't remember ever hearing like a guest i'm sure there's guests on other uh songs or records but i i don't remember hearing it as prevalent as in this one yeah there's there we had a guest on a track on the on the last album and then we had a few on the blood on the wall and i think like the these are the only three albums that have had guest features of any kind um the first three didn't at all okay um uh the back on the subject of like what songs on the album uh plastic lullabies is a very special song for me because um i put that like i was writing that song i started writing it years ago and then in 2019 my grandmother passed and so what i turned that song into is very much like dedicated to her and it's like you know in in a lot of ways it's like the last words i didn't get to say 
Uh, mm. It's not nearly all of them, but it's it's some of them. And yeah, that that song is very close to, close to me in my heart. Yeah, the, the the track before that, I was like, "Am I hearing some blast beats in this?" I'm like, "I love it." <laughs> yeah, that, that sensory blackout. Fun. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the song is fun. I uh, I the what I conceptualized for that song was like, um, the the kind of energy that you get if you call an Uber, and they show up. You get in the car, they lock the door, they pull out all the drugs. They do them right there and they just fucking floor it. And like the, just the intensity of that, like I've wanted that energy put into a song and like cuts off, like right at the very end. That's like the moment you die, basically the moment the car crashes. <laughs> it's awesome. No, it's uh, this uh, for, for those that are listening that haven't checked out 13 before, Definitely do yourself a favor and throw this album on. And if you really want to get nuts with it, throw it on shuffle because the, the songs all fit together. They are cohesive, but at the same time, each one offers up something a little bit different. That makes it enjoyable. Um, my notes were like, Oh my God, the first half is insane. And then we get the stuff that I was expecting for 13. Then, Oh my God, where is this coming from? So the, it's, it's not, not frenetic, but there's definitely a, there's a, there's a wave going through it yeah um i wanted to ask you zeke you know you were talking about you do a lot of this stuff yourself you were you were able to collaborate with some people here and there who is your dream collaborator in the sense of who uh, who would you if you got a call from this person they said hey i i like your stuff and i really want to let's collaborate on something would you just be is this a prank call who would I've it got, be i've got i've got like four off the top of my head and two of them are no longer alive so that won't happen but I would absolutely fucking shit my pants if I got a collab with Jonathan Davis, with Corey Taylor, and if we'd somehow have the ability to bring people back from the dead, Chester Bennington and Mitch Lucker from Suicide Silence. I was just going to say, is it Mitch? Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, definitely. That would be wild. Oh, oh, yeah, you did the cover track. Uh, you did a cover track on the cover track. You did a Suicide Silence track, didn't you? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, Destruction of a Statue. That's I, like my favorite <laughs> brutal song of all time. I, dude, I, I don't care what you say. I still think your version of Cold is better than the original. <laughs> I hear this. You know how many times I'm, I've heard this remark from I'm, Tim? <laughs> I'm not. I'm going to keep saying it. Every time I every time I know someone that likes Static X, I put that song on further. Than, and they're like, dude, that's fucking good. And I'm like, I think it's better than the original. Like, I don't know what you did to that track, but, like, it's just, like, the drum part. Like, you added the extra snares and shit in there. I, I think it blows the original away, man. Fucking great job on that. Just added a little bit of, of flow to it. Like, the, it, their music, you know, rightfully so, is uh, very mechanical. And, yeah. uh, you know, like, 13 is, it like... I've always taken mechanical sounds and tried to ha make them have like more of a human like flow or like yeah. just a more, like it's living, you know? Yeah. I mean, I'm almost at the point where I think the one more day might be better than the original. And that's huge praise because I mushroom head is one of my all time favorite bands. So when I heard the one more day come on, I was like, Whoa, like, is it going to be like, like I listened to it over the weekend when I was preparing for this and I was just like, like, fuck, how the fuck did he like, how does he do that on two of my favorite bands almost make the songs better? I mean, obviously, like I said, I think the static X track is better, but like the, the one more day, man, you fucking nailed that too. Like, that's perfect, dude. <laughs> yeah, now, uh, that, that that's um, I was going to make that a YouTube uh, cover um for not 13 this was like you know years back before and um i never finished it and then when i was making the cover album i was like oh i never finished this i guess i'll i guess i'll do that and i got to have my wife do the some of the vocals on it and that was fun that's always fun yeah yeah that's a great track man so so uh, so be before we talk about the album again are are you thinking of doing a another covers record? Because I'm very interested to hear if you are, or if you're going to like what tracks you're thinking of. Or I'm uh, I'm definitely thinking of 
trying to think of tracks for another cover album. I was, I want to do System of a Down. It's just a matter of picking one. Um, and like 13 has done System of a Down covers before, but that was before all of this 13. This was back when I was a high schooler. Um, and I'm sure any of those would still be good, but I, I don't know. I just got to, I got to figure out which one I can really make work. Um, but that's one of them. Uh, I don't know. I got, a, I got a list of songs that I got to look through and figure out which ones I really want to do and which ones, you know, should maybe just stay an idea. Sometimes yeah. that happens. It doesn't happen often for me, but sometimes it happens. Yeah, it's just it's like how do you and then and then it's like how do you fit in a whole covers record while you're doing another record like that? That's even right. crazy. What when did that come out? Twenty twenty, right? Uh, twenty twenty one. Um, okay. My goal was to get that album done somewhere uh, within the Blood on the Wall album cycle because those two albums, you know, Covered in Blood and the Blood on the Wall, are like sister albums. Okay. Um, okay. At least that's how they're intended. If gotcha. I could do like a special edition, I, I would package them both into one and sell that. Um, but man, making merchandise costs so much money. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's the yes. Keep up it's, a, it's gotten even worse as COVID hit. And, and then shit, the supply so. chain shit, like finding, finding a t shirt, a, a, a t shirt, t shirt blanks has been terrible. And then, I mean, even I mean, when you go out into a show, and I, I was at um, it was at the tour it was Undeath and Two Hundred Stab Wounds, and somebody was complaining that the T-shirts were all like twenty, twenty five, thirty bucks, and 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 I said to the guy I was with, "Are you not outside right now? Like, do you not see the price of everything has just gone yeah. up? I mean, I, I I couldn't imagine being and and we asked um we asked the guys from Vatican this because they were one of the first bands to go out once the the lockdowns lifted. They went out with Body Box and Boundaries and uh and Spite. And we said, you know, how are you guys surviving with the gas prices? You know, you can barely get to the next show. You got to just be shoveling money into, into the gas tank. Yeah, at merch yeah, sales. I mean, yeah. It's it's yeah. it's it's unreal. Let me ask you this, Zeke. I mean, it's it's the end. We're recording this in the end of the year, so this is when typically everybody does their end of the year list. Is there is there any anything else you've listened to? Any other bands, albums this year caught your ear? Stuff that you think people should check out? Um. Well, this year, I mean, my my picks are kind of basic. I really really enjoyed the new Slipknot album a lot. I really enjoyed uh the the newest motionless and white yeah, um, yeah and i i got into a band that i should have been following all this time but i finally like heard shit from them that like really piqued my interest um uh slaughter to prevail their album uh, yep. uh coast alone yep yeah that album the whole thing, whole entire thing, just a, a masterpiece of both deathcore and new metal. Like I'll say it, it's it's both genres equally, like perfectly, exactly, and it just blew my mind. You know, it it makes it makes so much sense right off the bat. Like I was hearing those riffs, and I'm like, oh shit, I I could have I could have written something like that if I just like stopped thinking so much about what I should write. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that album is uh they're blowing up that album is a monster uh we you know we've had adam easterling from orthodox on who talked about touring with them where he would alex terrible literally comes up out of the van for sound check he said he's got on like a white beater and a pair of like umbros and he grabs the <laughs> microphone and he's basically what you want you want me to sing okay <laughs> and he just goes right into it no warming up no nothing and adam said he was just standing and looking at this guy like Yo, this guy is a madman. <laughs> you gotta yeah, be I, coming I, out of I, Russia. I, I hope they get a chance to tour here because I really think they would be. They're like the. They just did. They're the, but I mean, like a massive U.S. Oh, okay. tour, like headlining themselves. I I think they are the um, more fun, less self serious version of Lauren Shore. 
So if you oh, think about yeah. Deathcore, right? Yeah. Lord of Shore is very serious. Not that it's bad, just they're very serious. They play long symphonic songs and it's very heavy. And Will Ramos has a voice, my Lord, the voice he's got. But then you've got Alex Terrible and the guys from Slaughter to Prevail who come out literally looking like Russian convicts and they just play mosh riffs the entire time. And you're like, yo, I can, I can yeah. fuck with this. Like, this is great. This is great. It's like bury your dead. Don't overthink it. Just lean into what what is fun. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I would absolutely love to open for Slaughter to Prevail. I want to drink with Alex, and I want to get him drunk enough to let me do a song with him on stage. If that can happen, uh, my life is complete. Um, at least until, at least not until I finish those other albums then my life is complete and this would be why so 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 speaking of other records now how much work do you have into the next one uh the next record is pretty much every instrumental all but like two or three songs uh is is mostly ready and then i have to record vocals on everything um and then the next album after that i have a few demos um and this is this is the one that i'm learning eight string for okay um i have a few demos that i'm now having to transpose to a string um so that's gonna be fun but that's gonna be my next uh my next thing after i finish this album Although right now I'm working on um, the video footage from the Black Ghost uh, release show. Oh, okay. I'm working on that right now, and I plan, I plan to have that released uh, in time for Christmas. We couldn't get it done in time for Halloween this year like we do usually. Um, but, yeah, it'll, it'll be out on Christmas. And then I can put the Black Ghost era behind me and just focus on moving forward. It, <sighs> It, it was it was really important that I get this album in particular out and like I don't really know why I guess it just like there's there's a lot of there's a lot of like trauma buildup that kind of led to the creation of this album in a way it was nice to like have that weight lifted off my shoulders finally well almost almost we're like 99% of the way there do you so so I know you I know you you won't say, but like, do you have a working title for the new one and all that stuff? Um, I'm not gonna say yet, but it's gonna be pretty obvious when when you hear it. Okay. Like, when you hear the album title, you're gonna be like, oh, of course. You know. Yeah, I'm 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 guessing in my head what it's about. Okay. Yeah, we don't have to talk about that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's just it's just wild to me that you're like, like, because obviously it's going to come out in October like you always do. But like, it's just wild that you're like, yeah, I already have it pretty much done. It's got to do vocals. Yeah. For those of you watching, listening at home, it's it's November 30th. This album has been out less than 30 days. And Zeke has the next one already written. Just yeah, think about parts that for of a the other and parts of yeah. the next one after that. Like, <laughs> think about that for a second. Yeah. And ideas for another cover album and ideas for other, you know, extracurricular sidebar shit that I can do. Like, but those are more for like, if I need to do something other than working on an impending like album drop coming, you know, sometimes like I, I just like to fuck around with shit and that can become songs. And, you know, if they're not album material, throw out an EP uh you know no physical just up on all the streaming and all that stuff and you know there you go i did have someone ask me for a physical copy of covered in blood and um for anyone wondering why we don't have one it's because they're all cover songs and i don't feel legally safe selling physical copies of that yep whereas like Online, online distro like they'll take care of all that like all the royalty shit for you you just check some boxes tell them whose song it is and they take care of the rest yeah so yeah clearing clearing rights mm-hmm. and the whole legalese thing that's that's not the best use of your time no yeah definitely not and i hate all that shit so like this this band has always strived to like 
avoid shit like that as much as possible. And some people would say that's to our detriment. I don't, I don't mm. think so or care. What we're mm. trying to do is way different from what other bands are trying to do. You know, you know what I was thinking the other day that would be great. Like if that if that you did, I don't you probably don't have the time for it, but like for, for someone like you that does everything, like have you ever thought about like putting out like song playthroughs of like either like a vocal take or like a guitar take, like for like certain songs? Have you ever thought about doing that? I actually have uh, been thinking about that a lot more consistently lately. Um, so for those who don't know, um, Igor, he's still in the band, but he's taking a hiatus for a year. So currently I, I'm the only active band member. Um, okay. And I think I'm going to try to stay that way throughout the year. Um, so obviously that makes going out and playing physical shows difficult, but that was already difficult because of the pandemic. And a lot of the gigs that we have been getting are people just trying to throw parties with their friends at so-and-so bar or so-and-so's house. So, um, you know, I've got the track behind me. I can still like come and perform at, at shows on my own. I did it in Houston once and it actually had a really good reception. I was very surprised. Like, People are kind of easing up to the idea of like a solo entertainer on stage, you know, doing their music for them. As long as they can still put on a good show, I think that's all that matters. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not focusing on doing physical shows so much for the year of 2023 as I will be focusing more on like online content. Yeah. I want to do more uh, shows in like a live stream format. I want to figure out how Twitch works. And, you know, maybe find a way to do uh, like weekly or monthly performances there. Not weekly. That would be way too much. But yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> trying to find ways to perform that aren't, you know, physically at the shows necessarily. And, you know, it's difficult because like I'm not necessarily good at plugging um, like our, our merch links and stuff online. But when you're at shows, you have the merch table and people can like see your stuff and buy it there. Um, so that that's another that's going to be another obstacle to overcome with the the mostly online thing that I'm going to try to do going forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think going that route for you, for you, especially since, you know, you're not going to focus on shows. I think that would be great because I think a lot of people, especially younger kids that are into the band, they want to see like the behind the scenes stuff. I mean, shit. I'm fucking yeah. older. I want to see that stuff because it's like, you know, when you have someone like you that does it, like I said, by yourself, like pe like people will be very interested to see that stuff. And Twitch is fucking huge for that, man. Like if you can figure out Twitch and get a good following on there, I mean it's that that's a yeah. detrimental part of, of a musician these days. Yeah. YouTube, that kind of stuff. It's I mean, essential. Yeah. It, yeah, exactly. Like that's so that's a good route for you to go, man. So if you if you put all your time in that and you can nail it, dude, that's just it. That's just better for you for selling your merch and all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. And you can get collaborators that way too. You know, you never know yeah. who's watching, dude. You yeah. never know. Yeah, somebody somebody uh, could be watching it and you could be like, wait a minute, fucking Chris Garza would want a guest on us all. Like, you know what I mean? Like that's sick yeah. shit, dude. I have a, a chunk of his guitar that he smashed when I saw him in San Antonio. Um I keep that on the the bookshelf where I have like the thirteen shrine, along with a bunch of other like good luck charms and things of that nature. Yeah, we we've been trying to get him on to talk to him because he's the big new metal dude. So yeah, yeah, we'll get there. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 Hell going. Yeah. It's looking impossible at this moment. <laughs> I like we'll uh, their new stuff. I I like their um uh their song uh, "Capable of Violence." that oh, music I, video i i haven't heard it that one yet gross. i have it at you 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 gotta you gotta watch the music video um it's brutal it's it's gory it's it's awesome i it's it's just so good um yeah fucking love that shit cool <laughs> cool yeah i'm oh, gonna yeah. check that out well listen dude dude thanks yeah. for coming on and we'll we'll let you get out of here and all that stuff but dude listen like we're we're looking forward to everything you do. So, ha happy you're happy you're here and happy we have seven yeah, more what, records to look what, forward to. One hundred percent, Zeke. One hundred percent. So, before we cut you loose, though, if if people want to 
check out your music. They maybe want to pick up some merch you've got available. Where do they go? Where do they find you? All right. So our music, you can find it on all the streaming platforms, Spotify, YouTube Music, Apple, all that shit, Google Play, anywhere you listen to music, you can find us. Um, except SoundCloud or Bandcamp. Those ones are a bit more difficult, um, but I'm working on that. And then for our merch, uh, we are at 13 Unmetal. That's X I I I U N M E T A L dot bigcartel.com. You can go there for all of our merch. You can get our Black Ghost CD. We still have copies of Creep Show left. Those are the only two CDs we have right now. Um, getting the older CDs reprinted has proven to be harder than I thought. Um, but hopefully someday we can get those uh, back in print. That's the thing, man. These album cycles are so brutal and hard to put together that like I can only get so many copies of each album as they come out. Like I didn't think that we would even need to get a hundred copies of creep show when that came out. Cause usually we run 50 and like we sold out of all of our CDs before the album dropped. So I had to order a whole nother set of 50. Um, and that was wild. Uh, so we started black ghost with a hundred copies and we still got plenty of them left. So yeah, go buy our shit. 13 on metal dot big cartel.com. Fantastic. Right. Thank you. So on behalf yeah. of Tim and myself, we want to thank you, Zeke, for showing up again. Um, third time's charm. We love having you on. On behalf of Zeke, myself, and Tim, we want to thank all of you listeners for tuning in, watching, listening. Once again, check out the new 13 album. Uh, you will definitely enjoy it. Find us on Instagram and Twitter at New Breed underscore podcast. Find us uh, bouncing around r slash new metal on Reddit. Um, I'm typically there posting under our account name with hot takes that are really pissing people off. So until next time, on behalf of Zeke, Tim, myself, uh, this is the New Breed Podcast saying cheers. Later. Unmetal.